Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to see the packet tracer activity investigating NAT operation. Before coming to uh, this packet tracer activity, uh, friends, if you like to get my future uploading video info into your mail, you can subscribe this channel right now. Well, uh, coming to our activity, here we will uh, go through the objectives of this packet tracer activity. In part 1, investigate NAT operation across the intranet. Then in part 2, investigate NAT operation across the internet. And finally in part 3, contact further inve investigations. Also, we will uh, go through the scenario here. As a frame travels across a network, the MAC addresses may change. IP addresses can also change when a packet is forwarded by a device configured with NAT. In this activity, we will investigate what happens to IP addresses during the NAT process. Coming to part 1, investigate NAT operation across the intranet. Step 1, wait for the network to converge. It might take a few minutes for everything in the network to converge. We can sp speed the process up by clicking the fast forward time. Here we can see that uh, fast forward time. Here our network is uh, almost converged. Coming to step 2, generate an HTTP request from any PC in the central domain. Open the web browser of any PC in the central domain and type the following without pressing enter or clicking go http colon double slash branch server dot pka here we can see our central domain uh, and we are going to select any pc uh, from this uh, list of pcs so here we will select this pc1 coming to desktop and here we are going to uh, select a web browser and uh, here is the url we are not going to press enter or this button go. Before that, we will uh, check the next uh, step. Uh, here is that. Uh, switch to simulation mode and edit the filters to show only HTTP requests. Right. So, coming to uh, real time to simulation mode. Here we are going to edit filters and uh, we are going to give only HTTP here. Yes, here we can see that. Here we can see even the list of filters are visible events only HTTP. Coming to C, uh, click go in the browser, a PDU envelope will appear. Then click capture or forward until the PDU is over D1 or D2. Record the source and destination IP addresses. To what devices do those addressing belong? Right here we can see uh, those devices at D1 and D2. Right. So here we are going to press go and we are going to click capture or forward. Here we can see the envelope on a PC1. Again capture or forward it goes, goes to S1. Capture or forward it goes to D1. Now we can see our envelope is on the device D1. Uh, now we are going to record the source and destination IP addresses uh, uh, by verifying this uh, envelope. Uh, we will click on this and here we can see the details. Here we can see the IP address 10.2.0.5 and the destination IP address 64.100.200.1 here we can see that address 10.2.0.5 so this is the IP address of this PC1 here we can see that yes 10.2. keep the cursor here 0.5 correct also the destination IP address 64.100.200.1 here we can see that in this uh, router R4 uh, the IP address of serial 0 slash 0 slash 1.1 now we will come to E click capture or forward until the PDU is over R2 record the source and destination IP addresses in the outbound packet to what devices do those addresses belong? 
now we are going to click capture or forward and here we can see that uh, packet or reached to uh, the device r2 now we will uh, check this uh, packet uh, which is uh, reached on the device r2 here we can see out layers and uh, here is the uh, source ip address 64.100.100.3 also we can see the destination ip address 64.100.200.1 this address already we have seen um, in the router r4 and the source ip address that is 64.100.100.3 is not assigned to uh, any interface coming to f login to r2 using class to enter privileged exec and to show the running configuration the address came from the following address pool here we can see that so this address that is uh, the source ip address 64.100.100.3 uh, is uh, came from the uh, from this address pool right so we will verify that coming to r2 cli here we are going to give enable password is class right so here we are going to give a show running config and we will verify uh, that uh, pool yes somewhere we have seen yes here we can see that ip nat pool r2 pool 64.100.100.3 coming to g click capture or forward until the pdu is over r4 record the source and destination ip addresses in the outbound packet to what devices do those addresses belong now we are going to click capture or forward it goes to intranet again capture or forward we can see it goes to r4 now we will check this uh, packet uh, which is reached on the device r4 here is that out layer here we can see the source ip 64.100.100.3 uh, this is the address uh, from r2 pool uh, on the device uh, r2 also we can see the destination ip address 172.16.0.3 so this address uh, is of this uh, server uh, branch server.pka coming to h click capture or forward until the pdu is over branch, branch server dot pka record the source and destination tcp port addresses in the outbound segment coming to our topology here we are going to press again capture or forward the packet goes to s4 capture or forward and here we can see it goes to branch server dot pka coming to our uh, packet Outlayer, so here we can see uh, layer 4 TCP source port is 80 and the destination port is 1025. Coming to I, on both R2 and R4, run the following command and match the IP addresses and ports recorded above to the correct line of output. We are going to give these commands so show IP NAT translations on R2 and R4 first of all we will give this command on r2 so ip nat translations and here we can see the details here we can see the protocol inside global inside local outside local and outside global Now we will give this command on R4. Enable. Here we are going to give a show IP NAT translations and here we can see the details. Protocol inside global, inside local, outside local and outside global.
coming to J, what do the inside local IP addresses have in common? Coming to R2 and R4, here we can see that inside local, uh, they are all uh, private addresses. Here we can see 172.16.0.3, which is uh, not routable uh, in the internet. Did any private addresses uh, cross the intranet? No. Now return to real time mode. Now we will come to part 2. Investigate NAT operation across the internet. Step 1. Generate an HTTP request from any computer in the home office. Open the web browser of any computer in the home office and type the following without pressing enter or clicking go. HTTP colon double slash central server dot pka. Here we can see our home office coming to home desktop web browser here you are going to give this a URL and now we will go to the next step switch to simulation mode the filters should already be set to show only HTTP requests right so we will come back to real time mode to simulation mode and here we can see even list filters visible events only HTTP Next is uh, click go in the browser, a PDU envelope will appear. Then click capture or forward until the PDU is over WRS. Record the inbound source and destination IP addresses and the outbound source and destination addresses. To what devices do those addresses belong? Now we are going to press go and capture or forward. Here we can see the envelope. Again, capture or forward, it goes to WRS. Now we are going to analyze this uh, packet. Here we can see in layer, here the source IP 192.168.0.101. This is the IP address of this uh, home desktop. Here we can see that. Right. And here we can see the destination IP address 64.100.100.2. So this is the IP address of uh, R2, here we can see that, R2, interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0, this address is 64.100.100.2. Also coming to outlayers, so here we can see the source IP address 64.104.223.2. So this is the address, uh, here we can see in this WRS. Yes, on internet we can see this address. Also, the destination IP address 64.100.100.2. Yes, this we have seen on the router R2. Coming to E, click capture or forward until the PDU is over R2. Record the source and destination IP addresses in the outbound packet. To what devices do those addresses belong? Right, coming to our packet tracer, we are going to click capture or forward. It goes to modem, capture or forward. It goes to the internet, capture or forward. Here we can see it goes to R2. Now we will verify the uh, this packet outlayer. So here we can see source IP address 64.104.223.2. Uh, previously we have seen this address uh, on WRS and the destination IP address is 10.10.10.2 so this is a private IP address this is the IP address of the central server dot pka next is if on R2 run the following command and match the IP addresses and ports recorded above to the correct line of output show IP net translations return to real time mode did all of web pages appear in the browsers so we will verify that now here we are going to click capture or forward and here we can see it goes to our central server dot pka and here we can see the details tcp source port is 80 and the destination port is 1025 so we will come to r2 cli and here we will give the command show ip NAT translations and here we can see the details.
here we can see the details now we will switch from simulation mode to a real-time mode and here we can see we are getting the web page now we will come to part 3 contact further investigations a experiment with more packets about http and https there are many questions to consider such as uh, do the NAT translations tables grow yes obviously it grows does WRS have a pool of addresses? No, we cannot see any uh, pool of address here. Uh, is this how the computers in the classrooms uh, connect to the internet? Yes. We connect uh, our uh, classrooms uh, to the internet uh, using a uh, NAT. Uh, why does a NAT use uh, four columns of addresses and ports? So coming to R2, here we can see those uh, columns inside global, inside local, outside local and outside global. Here we can see the first two columns that is inside global and inside local. They describe the globally and locally significant addresses of the inside host. And we can see the next two uh, columns that is outside local and uh, uh, outside global. Uh, the locally and globally significant addresses of the outside host. The two addresses of the outside address are identical. Uh, here we can see uh, an example. As global addresses are not being translated between uh, sides of the NAT boundary. Well, uh, that's all in this packetizer activity uh, investigating NAT operation. Friends, uh, if you have any doubt in this packetizer activity, please comment below. Also, if you like my video, give a thumb. And again, don't forget to subscribe the channel so that you will get latest uploading video info into our mail. Thank you.